Hello ladies and gentlemen, let's get back into casualing a little bit against lower rated players and I'm breaking the rules that I set myself because I started off against a 20 hundred player but um, I'm going to take it down a notch and also the time control is not exactly optimal because of uh, three minutes is not really friendly and we have got the Yenish also known as the Schliemann on the board now this is typically an opening variation that you can't avoid not learning because um, every single sideline is just inferior compared to the main line from White's point of view and so a typical case of it's better to be embraced than avoided which is 99% of the time my policy with openings anyway um, and just take it from there um, I'm not sure if I remember this correctly but I think it's Queen E2 and then d5 takes, pawn takes, d4, bishop g7, d5, castles, e6, and that's where I usually forget theory, so let's go. It may have been take first. No, it's not, because then they can't, yeah, no, I did the right thing. All g. Isn't that a freebie? Okay, so there is a line like this, and... It doesn't matter how long I leave, I will never understand why people enter this because it's a clear pawn down for very vague compensation, if any at all. But uh, this is what it is now, so we'll go with it. I'm just checking if takes, takes, queen h5 check works, but after g6 takes, the bishop covers the rook, so I'm not super excited about that. Castle seems like a good good sensible little move here so let's do that and after castles I don't have check because they can probably block it so I will just go d3 I guess yeah d3 and now my job is just to try to convert the material advantage that we have I don't know if I will need to play f4 uh, in this position I get away or I get away with bishop f4 but bishop f4 seems to attract this tactic here it's nine takes bishop takes yeah I don't seem to have enough there then again it doesn't have a threat yet so I could go bishop d2 bishop c3 which is uh, a location I quite like for my bishop actually so let's hope I'm not blundering anything. Bishop d2, queen h4, then I go here and then f4. If bishop d2, rook here, bishop c3, then I can play f4 anytime. So let's go. The two bishops are definitely a little bit fearsome because uh, the position is totally open. In fact, I feel a little bit more comfortable with playing f4 first just to shut this diagonal down. Excuse me forever. Maybe I offer now another avenue of attack, but then again, I can easily block that. So let's go here. So maybe now he's going to go check and then some rook lift or instant rook lift and come over here. Like I said, he does have a bit of a, uh, an, an initiative here, but uh, with correct play, we should be able to dismantle that. <sighs> Obviously, our objective now is to trade like mad. And luckily our opponent is being a little bit predictable. Hmm. What should we do? I'm a bit reluctant to play g3 because it creates weaknesses that I didn't want to have. Uh, queen f2, queen h5 is possible. Yeah, let's go here. Queen h5. Maybe rook here, rook here, and then either h3. Or I can even go queen g3, I reckon. Maybe after queen g3 has bishop e5, bishop e5, rook g6 is a little bit annoying. Uh, not really though, because when the bishop comes here, I can just block it off. So let's see what it does. Maybe it will bring up the other rook. And go full on crazy with take and then bring the other rook there too. Wow. 
That was strange. Okay. I have no idea what it's trying to do. So now what I'm trying to do is that I am relieving the pain of the H2 hanging. And so now I'm getting Queen G5 on the ready. Did I have some tactics based on this knight jump, by the way? Because as soon as I jump the knight, there is mate on G7, but I don't think it's legit because then rook G6. Yes, so now he came in, but I think he's just one move too late to the party. Knight G4 wins as well, but I just want to keep it simple because I'm short on time. He's going to play bishop takes, takes, rook takes, rook E5, and... Uh, He's a pawn down in a very bad endgame, but now he opted for losing a piece instead. So we managed to fend off this attack rather well. Without too many dramas now. Oh, okay. It's getting cute. I might trap the rook there actually with king up, king up. Oh, okay. Check. Check. Do what you want, and I'll trap your rook. GG! Yeah, I knew he would do that, and now he will take this, but I will take with check. That's, that's gonna hurt. That's a shock. Ouchie. Here we go. King up, bishop check, king back, and then we're mating. Actually, let's take this first, and then take on uh, h5 is an inevitable mate next. GG! Okay, let's look around for a lower rated opponent. 5-5 five, five against the 1500 with question mark. That's a, a perfect time control with a perfectly bad um, rating because I don't like question marks. Okay, let's go uh, Nidorf because a lot of my students play Nidorf now. So I feel inclined to go with that. That's a move that you would not want to play if your objective was to win chess games. Uh, I very strongly recommend against that. Now I could go for d5, I could go for a... Yeah, don't do that. a6, b5. And because of his playing so timidly, I feel obliged to play in the center. Because that's what you do. When your opponent abandons the center, you conquer the center. And now I have an option actually soon uh, to shut down this bishop forever. That is looking like a very provocative bad move because knight d4. So once again, the centralization is on the menu. Now we are forcing the queen back to d1. But more than likely, we will also have to come back because he either will try to kick us out with knight bishop e3 or knight e2. So I'm looking at uh, some developing move once the queen uh, goes back to d1, which it has done. Bishop b7 is one, bishop f5 is another. But since uh, I have got a, an agenda with, yeah, c4, but it's hard to tell. Because if I have to take, take this diagonal will come very handy, right? But if I put the bishop here, then c4 puts a lot of pressure on this and this. So I'm a little bit torn. Let's go here, just because after bishop e3 I have knight f5 with the tempo. But I'm not sure about this move. I'm not sure about that one. Now I don't really want to trade because these pieces are junk. But if I drop back he will follow me. So let's drop back here. Because now knight f4 blocks the bishop in. Also allows me to put a bit of pressure on that diagonal. So he's now already trying to uh, evac the bishop and playing for d4. Which is probably the best thing he could do, by the way. So on that note, now I'm trying to start becoming annoying myself. By the way, d4 will have a downside. And that is, is that um, then e4 square becomes mine. Now, I think I may have a threat here. Although after bishop... Yeah, maybe not. 
But now I have finished development fully and he has got uh, a few doozies around. So I'm definitely already standing better as black. However, the degree of how much better it is, is in doubt or questionable at least. So where is he going? Hmm. No, we're good. So I'm kind of tempted to double up, but what I really want to avoid is masses of trades on the file. I'm also a little bit tempted to do this, to open this up. Admittedly, it does open this one up too, but I feel that also cementing the pawn on d3 could have benefits for me. Yeah, let's do this. Let's, let's go. I like this big boy here. He is now flexing his muscles. Who is Novianan? Let's, let's check this Novianan dude out. See, that's what I'm telling you. 800 games and question mark rating. How is that possible? Okay, so queen f4 is not... Yeah, it is a blunder. Because now after rook e2, he can't take here. He will have to take here. And then I pick off this cherry. And that's basically it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. He's in all kinds of trouble now because this rook is glued to the bishop. The bishop doesn't really have a good square to go to. This is hanging, so he's likely to take. Actually, I have to be a little bit care. Oh, okay, yeah, this is going really bad here. So his only sensible move here was to take me here, hoping that I would take back with the queen, and then perhaps knight f3, which probably would have prompted me to take, because if I don't, then after knight g5, there is a bit of a pressure coming onto these... Uh, squares. Instead he played bishop b1, that's a doozy, that is hope chest, that um, after takes knight g4 and d4 I'm going to blunder a mate down here, but you don't play a move like this without calculating it, and it's a very basic calculation because no matter what he does, my next move is c2, and that just kills this entirely, unless he starts it with d4, but then again I've got a lot of choices there, to prepare for this. E.g. I can play g6 kicking the queen out, even allowing them to take, and after take, take c2 again, and uh, we are in a totally winning endgame. So this was out of desperation in a position that was bad for them, but it wasn't that bad enough to justify such a desperate call. And now he's already seeing the problem and regretting his decision, but unfortunately chess is a bit cruel in this regard that you can't really undo um, those types of errors. So now, since this is his only active piece, um, I'm going to go and exchange it and hoping to exchange the queen too. So although my bishop was an absolute boss, but from now on, my only job is to secure the win. And um, it is simplest achieved by destroying any hopes of counterplay. So it's not just trade, trade, trade. Um, my objective was not to trade like mad. My objective was to trade specific particular pieces, the bishop and the queen, because they were the two pieces that had potential to cause problems for me. And in the absence of them, well, I didn't mean the absence as in a blunder. Um, I can't possibly face... Oh, and now he just left the game. Wow. I even sent him a take back. I should have sent the take back actually before I took it. Okay. Unfortunately, he gave up. So, yeah. Um, it would be interesting to see actually what was going on here in the opening. Um, yeah, so we were clearly better, but Bishop B7 I wasn't sure about. Oh, top choice by the engine. I'm not sad. Here the engine wanted to take, I went back, I wanted to keep pieces on. D4 was already good here. I regret that I hadn't done that then. And now, again, this was just good chess. Okay. I'm pretty happy. Let's have some more, if we can find any. Cash. Lots of casual question marks. Okay, let's let's do another very low rated question mark. This time we go for d4. d5, c4. 
apply proper openings folks that's the way to good chess good openings lead to fun good positions lame openings lead to repeatedly recurring same boring structures so now we are going to opt for the meran bishop g5 would have allowed the opponent to enter the botvinnik now bishop d6 here is a slight error knight d7 is better and very often the bishop actually lands on d6 so now we're going to play bishop d3 hoping to get e4 in and now we get e4 in because the rule of thumb is kenta senta now we're going to go up there because that's even more center for me and after 98 we're going to go h4 because we are players with cojones wanting to go for bishop takes h7 now it actually has nothing to do with cojones it's just a fun move to play with hardly any risk involved now after f5 this is a an interesting story here because there is a case to be made for taking and there is a case to be made for not taking and i don't really know which one to go with because now g5 i find extre extremely tempting yeah, I want to go knight g5. Well, after takes, knight takes, I would have had a huge positional edge because of the backward pawn and the weak e5 square. But I want to build on the attack. So if he takes, I want to take back with the h pawn and crank this open. If he goes there, that's actually a game losing blunder and a very sad one. Because now I have got c5 and the knight has nowhere else to go but back there because if he goes to c4... Oh! Okay, maybe he can go back to a5, but this loses. This looks absolutely terrible. And actually, after knight he b3, knight a5, I'll have queen h5, h6, queen g6, takes, takes, and there are beautiful mates coming in. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping he sees this because that would be the perfect. So, like, sacking there would be a bit lame. So, if he finds that... Maybe he has queen a5 too. Maybe queen h5 was actually the, my best move and I got a bit too cash. Mm. No, actually that's nonsense. Queen a5, queen c2 would have trapped the knight. So now there is mate on h7. He has to go here. And then I go queen g6. Renewing the threat here. And forcing them to take me. Thus opening up this file. And baby there is a beautiful mate already coming up there. H takes, h takes. And then queen check, king he pawn up mate. So actually somewhat cleverly, but not quite, he takes with the bishops so that his h-file remains closed. But when I take back like so, he has no choice but to allow this attack to break through. I will show you the mate patterns there afterwards because uh, it's actually pretty spectacular, some of them. Yeah, I'm actually very glad in hindsight that I didn't take... Uh, that uh, f5 pawn when the offer came on. It's already very difficult to hold this off because any move you make is weakening. Oh, he resigned right away. Okay, let's have a look at this just very quick. So what I wanted to show you here is that if he takes, I take back. And now if any lemon, then check and there is a beautiful mate here. Quite amazingly, the king is surrounded by all his own pieces and so I only needed to cover three squares that's all to make it mate now to stop this this knight has to move and the idea is that if i go check the king escapes via this way and the way you deal with that there are multiple ways to deal with that actually the there are two stock standard ones one of them is to pull the queen back still monitoring the square and creating the threat of g6 followed by mate and that for all intents and purposes is unstoppable without shredding insane amount of material plan b which i like a lot more actually in the sense that it's very clever usually when you see this h file corridor mate it's called in uh, one of the books that i discussed with you guys that i can't see now uh forcing chess moves we almost always have the queen in the front but here the best motive is actually that you slide the rook up first creating mating one the rook has to defend, and then you swing the rook, uh, the queen back here. And what it does is, is that it 
switch the uh, order of the pieces around so that now the rook is in the front, the queen is in the back. And what it does is that now the queen is still covering this square whilst we are threatening with mate. So now even if the rook goes anywhere, there is no running away for the king and it's still mate. So these two mating patterns are super important to know if you embark on an attack based on this sacrificial idea on g5 with cracking the h file open. I'm sure that uh, Ginger GM could tell you very long and very entertaining stories about these mates because Sack Sack and Mate would definitely have some of these uh, ideas. All right, let's do another one. Actually, I'm going to start a search of my own. Maybe someone bites. Let's do another 5-5. Five, five. Casual 500 plus 500. Actually, no, that's not enough. Wait a second. We need to go further down than 500. Oh, I can't. Okay. That's a problem. Okay, there's a 2100 dude. 2100. Okay, well... I know that you folks prefer lower rated, but um, I will try to make it as educational as possible. Sicilian, embrace it, play it, defeat it. Okay, so this is going to be an accelerated dragon Morozzi bind. A dude from Brazil, Vinicius Barbosa. I wish I spoke some uh, uh, Portuguese to understand it. He's asking me to send him the link, so I shall do that. But I don't want to mess with uh, the recording, so I will do it in a different browser so you guys don't uh, get distracted by my actions. Uh, and we pull the horse back. This is actually the, night, uh, the line that is recommended by uh, Agard in his uh, excellent book, which I recommend to everyone who is playing Open Sicilian as White, called Experts vs. the Sicilian, or Sicilians even. Um, yeah, this is a very interesting idea. It's a passive move that retreats a piece from the center. But it does have the benefit of keeping Ball all choice. four minor pieces yeah. on the board, which Ball is, of taste. course, something that is very important. Hello when to we the are chicas! With space advantage. So now we are just going to develop, 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 develop. And uh, be happy. Just be happy. Okay, let's put the bishop on e2 first. I find this uh, a practical decision and a better one than bishop e3 because if I had gone bishop e3 first, I always have to watch my back in regards to knight g4. I'm thinking, did I mess this up now? Because maybe I was meant to play castles. Knight d7, bishop d2, knight c5, b4, there is a line like that. Okay, f so that when knight e5 comes I can play b3 and he can't go to g4 hopefully that's the idea so normally we complete both chains like so and so and then black usually finds it quite difficult to bite into it but I always have to look out for b5 ideas so now we go b3 and if he plays queen a5 I need to think queen d2 yeah queen if I go queen d2, his b5 gonna hurt me. Takes queen c7, and then two of my knights are hanging. But then I have bishop d4, and we're doing fine. Okay, let's go. So b5 is the one that I obviously have to watch out for. Queen, D, queen a5 here is a very commonly known losing move because then I have knight d5. When he takes my queen, I take that pawn. Now the fireworks will begin and um, we might get burnt. I honestly don't know. But I couldn't see what he had after queen c7, bishop d4 and so I can't possibly give in to ghosts. Because um, then I obviously I needed to choose a different move here instead of queen d2 if I thought b5 was dangerous. But I calculated it. 
Excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and I went, okay, I take queen c7, bishop d4, I don't see what the problem is. And if you don't see what the problem is, you should not, not enter a line. Even if it looks scary. If your calculation tells you that it's not sound, then that overrides scary every time, all the time. Because it's an objective black and white thing. It's either correct or it's not. There is no in-between, really. Um, hmm. Now the question is what to take it back with. But because of I prefer rather fewer than more loose pieces, I would tend to take with the horse because it denies queen a5, the knight becomes defended, and uh, one of the knights can jump to d4 next, blocking the diagonal and also tickling the bishop on e6. d5 is the move that I should have looked at, and I didn't, and I'm very much regretting my decision about that. Not that I allowed this, but the fact that I didn't look at it. Um... I will definitely think about playing knight d4 against it. So d5 is a very logical move to play here to try to blow up the center now that my pieces are a little bit uh, wayward. So d5 knight back pawn e4 knight takes e6 is definitely good for us. Although there is take 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 here so I might have to go with this horse. Hmm. Okay, so d5 knight here. If takes takes, that's definitely very good for us because it's triple pawns. We kept the two bishops pointing uh, this way like mad where the pawns are running up. That's definitely good for us. So the only concern is d5 knight d4 bishop d7. What, what is this? I have no idea what's going on, guys. I take this, he takes here, I take that. This... What? Yeah, nah, this is just garbage. Like, I've got bishop d4 that is winning here. This is totally unsound. Nah, sorry, I mean, I don't mean to disrespect my opponent, but it's a very important lesson that a lot of people don't do, in my opinion, and they should, and that is to evaluate their opponent's moves inside their heads. Now, there is a reason why I'm not doing it inside my head, because mute YouTubing is not really uh, quality content, is it? But if you don't call a move garbage, then there is every chance that you are not going to respond to it adequately, which means that you're trying to refute it. So if I respect a move like this, then I'm very likely to um, not respond to it the way I should. And a lot of people will misunderstand and don't, can't possibly figure out the difference, which is rather easy, actually, by the way, mm -hmm. between respecting the opponent and respecting the move. I will have a, an everlasting respect to my opponent as much as I have for anyone who plays against me. But the moves don't earn my respect unless they are good. And if it's garbage, then I must call it garbage so that my mindset is such that I set upon immediately punishing it because I'm not here to praise my opponent, I'm here to beat them. And for that, I need to make the largest number of best decisions I can do now, the way I can do that is if I am fully aware of what's going on on the chessboard that I'm playing on. And if I am not aware that my opponent's moves are really bad, then all good for that matter, either or, how could I possibly respond best to them? Impossible. I actually miss that they can take it after takes three the queen, but I mean, I've got three pieces for a knight, so uh, three pieces for a uh, rook, so I dare say that uh, we're doing rather splendidly here. Yeah, this should be over soon. I'm thinking if the rook swing is over here, I might actually just pile up on the F and mate him. It's pretty much an unstoppable. Whereas if he does that, 
I can just entertain an idea of just rolling in here. I'm tempted to go a5 takes, takes, queen takes, a6, rook back, a7, rook across and just take it from there. But I feel like even that is giving too much for them. Yeah, actually, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to disconnect this rook from coming back. And then I'm going to do this because when he takes, 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 and I go a6, his rook can't come back anymore. But I mean, yeah, this is over a drover. Um, it's a pity that he, he entirely lost his mind here because after d5, this could still have been a very good contest because there I am actually pretty well tested in terms of what's best maybe after knight d4 bishop d7 i need to allow the take and just run my pawns like mad i don't know um i will have a quick look at it and uh, we'll decide so now we're just rolling in right up 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 queen that's the plan yep Yep, we are done. We are done, Ski. I told him that he should have played uh, d5 instead of uh, knight takes e4. Okay, one more. Uh, I will try to go down again in terms of rating. Fifth, uh, bit short. Three minutes is not really something that I like to do because it's hard to commentate on. But I will try my best. French. Uh, an opening you shouldn't be playing when you are 1600 unless your name is SM French. Is the dude French? We will never know. Uh, and that's a losing move because of knight b5. So that's a pity that uh, he plays the French, he's called the French, and he loses in the French. So that is the reason why mainline theory here is either castles or a6, because you need to dodge one of these at least. So now he allowed that, which means no castling. The knight is uh, very, very poorly misplaced. And now I managed to retain my beautiful pawn chain as well. Yeah, and this is where you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Like, take I looked at it for a second. Is it worth it? Like, not really. Just develop your pieces, mobilize your army, bring out your dudes, and you are going to win the game. And g five is tempting, but I really like this rook c one move because I can already see that uh, the c file is going to be an important um, avenue. Now h6 is interesting because it seems to me that he wants to blunder with g5, which is a blunder because takes takes knight takes g5 and he can't take because of check. So I'm going to develop again because that's what uh, my coach told me to do. That I actually shouldn't have allowed because now the knight can reroute or rather regroup to c6, but that's fine. He still can't really mobilize. Now after rook b8, he's playing insanely fast, by the way. He can finally play bishop here. Yeah, I shouldn't have allowed this. That was a bit foolish by me. Okay, let's deny this uh, knight b4 biz. Let's gain some space on this side too. Especially because the queen is, king is stationed there. Maybe knight c8. Yeah, so he's now going to go to g5, or that's what he wants to do. I'm not sure if I care, to be honest. Okay, that's a freebie. So I will take that, thank you very much. So he missed the tactics. That if rook takes, I can take. And then I will check it down. Ouchie. This guy has some potential, but he's playing insanely fast and uh, very careless chess but I felt like I lost 
a large chunk of my advantage there potentially due to allowing knight b4 so perhaps i needed to play some like look at a plus seven that's insane so i played bishop d oh okay so it's yeah that's that's yeah i shouldn't have allowed that queen b3 i didn't think of this that's very clever And then some rainy days, you even can swing across to a3 and put some pressure here. <laughs> Interesting stuff. And here, I don't think my advantage was that great anymore. I mean, it's still a solid plus three. So that's not bad. And then g5, we took it and that was it. All right, last one. Let's see how we go in last. 1755. Perfect. Irvin Rommel. <sighs> Which is basically a different way to spell Erwin Rommel, who was uh, one of the uh, masterminds, actually, in uh, Hitler's army. A general who uh, was the main brain power behind that uh, desert operation. Desert Fox, I think it was called. What am I confusing now? Things with the uh, American invasion of Iraq. That's kind of embarrassing. I can't remember. No, he was called the Desert Fox. That was Irving Rommel, I'm pretty sure. And he was an absolute genius, a mastermind of uh, military strategy. And um, it's just a pity that uh, the dude was on the wrong side of the business. Um, hmm. Knight of six. Again, these two are so weird. So now I have D4. Although if I go d4, he has check here and then knight e4. So yeah, now I will wait one more move with d4 to be sure that he can't put the knight on e4. Now again, if I play d4, he can take take knight e4. So I will just castle. But I feel like I may have missed an opportunity here. We'll see. Okay, 95 and the heat is... Getting a reel on this d5 pawn. Yeah, I think I messed this up a little bit. I don't like this layout. I should have played d4 somewhere. I started talking about Rommel too much and then I got distracted. Maybe b4 here. Yeah, knight e5 is a good move. Do I... Take, take, and then b4. Knight d5. Bishop d5. I don't know. We have to go now. Okay. Takes is going to go here because he's cheap. No. He's not. That's a really bad move, actually, because now he either has to give up the bishop, undesired, or has to occupy the very square where the knight wants to go. So now, what's that knight doing there, you might ask? Yeah, so let's just develop now. Development is so good, man. Just bring your pieces out. It's amazing what that can do to you. I was contemplating d4, but I don't like the idea of trading the white squared bishop and then having 5 million pawns fixed on... Oh, wow. Erwin Rommel left the game. Well, we can't finish on this one. What the heck was that? Okay, one more. Actually, no, I want to know what would have been best in that opening because I got very busy with uh, the history lecture that I probably got half of the facts wrong. And so... I don't know what I messed up there. Oh, okay, so d5 is not that great here. Right. And d4, he was right. I knew that I needed to play wood, but that was a white d4. Wait a tick. I wanted to go d4 here. No. No. Rookie eight, wow. 
and here you need to go i4 of course and my plan was to come across here to deny this but uh this is a bit fishy okay one more folks one more cash 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 huh no okay let's do a tenno let's do a tenno d4 against n can g n can g who are you you don't know we don't know okay fair enough another queen's gambit let's bring on beth Harmon. oh the semi slaverino so knight f6 or dc4 okay so again we offer the meran and by the way before you ask or Actually, it would be good if you asked. So e3 here is not really a biggie in regards to shutting the bishop in. Because um, we are aiming to play e4. And so that bishop will come out. So d takes bishop, takes b5, bishop back, and then various moves is mainline theory. So let's see how we go. There is a6 here, there is b4 here, there is bishop b7 here. They are all valid ideas. <clears throat> yep, let's go with this one. So it be, I think the theory here is b4, knight a4, c5, e5, knight d5, knight takes, or d takes, or none. Oh, actually, castles is a line there in the knight g5. There is some fascinating stuff there. Um, actually, now that it's on my desk, I did talk about this essential uh, chess sacrifices book that has a fair few uh, games from this particular line. Now, this is a really bad move, and here I'm going to teach you a very valuable lesson. And that will teach you how to avoid making a mistake like this. So he plays this move. He goes like, oh, it's brilliant. It's developing. It's spinning the knight. It's all good. How could I play a better move? Well, easily. Most of them would have been better. First of all, is the pin hurting me? No. E4 is safely protected. So the pin is useless. Secondly, if I had a choice to play a move E4 white next, that would either be E5 or castles. So now he's forcing me to make the move that was on my number two priority list. So forcing me to play the best move. Last but not least... Does he want to take this? And said, so, no way. So after castles, this move has lost all its meaning. And now he has got a misplaced bishop. And now a dead loss position too, because uh, the um, great gift is incoming. Do I want to insert this and then take, or do we go take first? I feel like sometimes this knight might come handy in the defense, uh, in the attack. So let's go straight in. And once again, you see how terrible this bishop is. If he had put it here, I would have never had the um, the great gift because now g5 wouldn't be on. So that's how you recognize that these pinning moves are often absolutely terrible. And we love pins for the record. Don't get me wrong. Pins are awesome but uh, only when they do something. Now, the reason why I'm going to take this is because if I go queen h5, he can go knight f6 and then knight f6 again. So we are going to insert this. And now he has to retake, else he loses this. And that's when I'm going to deliver the death sentence. Yep. In we go. And now it's going to be a checkmate arena and a pretty splendid one too. So the way it's going to be made is rook here, only move to allow the king to run. And then I'm going to take this, then back, then check, then check, and then mate here. A stock standard pattern in the uh, Greek gift. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Mate in five after rook e8. He can take and prolong his agony and that's pretty much it knight f6 yes yeah. so now i take this he has to go there we go back check here please let me play it out it's so nice 
So then we go check back here, check here, and takes g7 mate is the end. A very typical stock standard mate uh, in the Greek gift, and I think it's a perfectly fitting finish to this video. I hope you guys liked it. We had a little bit of a mix back here uh, in terms of opponent's rating range and uh, the level of opponent's plays, but I think uh, there were a few opportunities for us here to take a few things away from this game. So please don't forget to press like, press sub, um, whatever way you can help me to spread the love of my channel. And I'll be back with more soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.